Good morning. Now I got my heater on. Hang on. It's like 46 degrees, I think. 43 degrees this morning. We are up early. It's almost 8 o'clock in the morning and we are headed to the RTR. Deborah and I are speaking today. Um, of course, when you see this, it's going to long be past, but um, we are speaking today at 2 o'clock. Yeah, we don't want to be late, so we're going early. <laughs> uh, we want to get a good parking spot. We want to get there and not be rushed. So we're up and ready. We're going to get there, have breakfast, kind of just chill and um, get ready for our presentation at 2. So we're speaking today on free camping, boondocking, and um, we're leaving. We're still in the LTVA right now. Uh, we had some rain here, so there is some puddles, but, um, we are on our way to the park. Mic check. Mic check. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How are you today? We're doing a mic check. Can you hear me? Hi. Can y'all hear me out there? Hey, is this where I sing my favorite song? <laughs> I can't sing. She's lying. She can sing. Hi, my name is Bobby. I'm with Homes on Wheels Alliance. We're glad to see all of your smiling faces this sunny afternoon. What a gift. Got some good weather for us today and a full calendar of events here at the RTR. Next up on stage, you're going to see our, you're going to learn about um, boondocking, how to find free camping from two pros that have been at it for a little while. Uh, and before I introduce them to you, I also want to let you know, they are the most generous group. They've decided that they're even going to let the band that comes on after them continue to set up while they're doing their presentation. So, because we're singing. Because they're awesome human beings. <laughs> She's singing. <laughs> Right, right. So let me tell you about these lovely ladies. The phone went to sleep. Here we go. All right, Jana. Jana is on, let's see, there she is in, in the beige. Uh, Jana's been on YouTube since 2015. In addition to her travels, uh, she shares a lot about cast iron cooking, hiking, fishing on her channel. She's been on the road full time since 2018, and she travels with her dog, Sammy Joe, adorable little pup. Uh, Janet can be found on YouTube and all social media as Frugal RV Gal. Frugal Go RV check it out. Gal. Yeah. All right. And last but not least is her partner in crime. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? it's a true story. These two, every time I see them, they're camped together and, uh, and they bring a lot of smiles. All right. So Deborah is the author of seven books and her eighth is coming uh, just, it's coming out really soon, May 1st. It's the second in a romance fiction series about life on the road. She has been full-time since 2015 and enjoyed traveling with Bob Wells in her first year on the road. This is Deborah's second time speaking to us from the uh, RTR stage, and she's also taught some online classes for Hawa. Uh, she was the extra, or was an extra, in on the set of Nomadland, which we're going to be showing on a big screen right over there in a few hours. Um, and uh, she says if you squint, you can see her five times in the back. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> awesome. Um, she's also shown in the photo for People Magazine in April 2021, sitting behind Frances McDormand. So Deborah, you, you probably know from YouTube, she's been on YouTube since 2016 and can be found on all social media, including, oh, my phone went to sleep, her website, Deborah. Dickinson, that's D I C K I N S O N dot com. Deborah is D E B R A. Please welcome this beautiful team. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Bobby. Oh, we just appreciate this opportunity so much, and Bobby, thank you for extending the invitation for us to be here today. Uh, we want to thank Howa. I just got to see uh, Sue Ann and all of the volunteers for all that you are doing. Uh, this is such a blessing, and we will share the stage with you guys as long as you be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It's just that the, this is a little bit nerve-wracking for us, even though this is my second time to speak. And um, 
So we've practiced really hard. We want to be sure that we bring you information that you can find helpful today. I will try to keep from turning my head away from the mic so that you can continue to hear me. Are we ready? We're ready. Okay. So like Bobby said, I have been on the road since uh, 2015, Janice since 2018. That combined is 12 years experience that we're bringing you today. It was hard to condense it into 30 or 40 minutes because we're going to have questions and answers at the end. Both Jana and I have traveled solo on our own and we travel with friends. That was not <laughs> and the speaker fun. is live. <laughs> right. Yeah, last year Deborah and I traveled. Um, we've done some boondocking and we also traveled in the New Mexico State Parks. We bought the uh, park pass, really enjoyed that. But today we're going to talk about free camping. Yes. And also, those of you that might not know, I have a traumatic brain injury. The doctors told me that I would not see 2016, and I truly believe I own that remote deep boondocking is what saved my life. It gave me back a life. It allows me to see, yes, I am so grateful, and I, I really believe I owe that to boondocking. And it gave me the life that I have today to be able to be here with you guys and, um, you know, I, I, I just wouldn't be here otherwise. I'm, I'm convinced of that. I also love to boondock. And of course, that's what we're going to talk about today. But I also travel and um, travel in RV parks, like to stay in RV parks and also um, state parks, national parks. So I don't just boondock, but we're going to talk about boondocking. Um, one example I want to talk about uh, a couple of years ago, I did a coast to coast trip and uh, I stayed in RV parks and state parks, national parks. I went all the way from Quartzsite all the way to Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, all the way back through Texas, back to California. And my friend here, Leslie, we went up to Oregon, Washington, all the way back down to California, all in one year. And it was a combined effort in staying in RV parks and boondocking. We did a lot of boondocking on the coast. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Absolutely. We're going to share with you our tips, tricks, and tools for free camping. But Jana has a favorite, and our friends always tease her. What is your favorite way to find free camping, Jana? I will follow you. <laughs> always. And we just yeah. we love that about you. <laughs> I have lived in four rigs in nine years and in that full-time uh, travel since 2015. And like Bobby said, the first person that I was blessed to travel with for my first year on the road was Bob Wells. I was in a cargo van at that time and I lived in that cargo van. It wasn't one you could stand up in. I lived in that cargo van with my two senior dogs for five years. Since 2020, I have lived in a vintage Class C RV known as, affectionately known, as Phoenix because she was pronounced DOA by five professional mechanic shops and two of my nomad friends resurrected her in the middle of the desert and that was uh, Curtis Talmadge and Randy the Mobile Traveler and I am forever grateful to them or I wouldn't be here today. I have spent the majority of time uh, boondocking in both of those rigs and today um, I want to show you tell you that one of the things that you hear is just find public land and you can go anywhere. I want to tell you that that is not true. When you look at maps and apps, for example. I know this is far away, but yeah, if you can see the color. Yeah, they might, you might hold it up above the ribbon. But uh, this is quartzite, and, and, and I know most of you can't see it, but that tan color and the blue color is all public land for camping. But you can't just go anywhere. That's a lot of land, but we're gonna tell you today how to find that specific campsite. Likewise, if you look at Prescott, Arizona area, it is covered with national forest area. Look at all, all that green. green. Yeah, look at all that green. You'd think that you can go camp anywhere, but that is not true. There are tips, tricks, and tools to finding an actual campsite among all of the colored public lands that you're seeing. Uh, what I always tell everybody is have a backup plan for your backup plan because it comes in handy. That's right. Just because it is public land doesn't mean that you can park on it. You got to remember what kind of vehicle you're driving. All vehicles can't make it to the special campsite. 
Absolutely. And so my van, I obviously could go more places in my van than I can my RV. Yeah, uh, I can go more places than you can go because <laughs> yes. I have a big dually. I've got a Dodge Ram 3500 dually. She's a beast. She's got four wheel drive. However, she is very heavy and she's very tall. So one example of when I was in Oregon and Washington, we went down a very narrow road. And as we kept driving further and further, the canopy of the trees just started taking over. We had to stop. I was, I was following two vans and we were gonna go check out a campsite, but I had to um, turn around because I couldn't make it. So it does depend on uh, your rig and everything is a trade-off. Not only is access getting into where you wanna camp a consideration, you've gotta consider how you're gonna get out. And also you might wanna consider signal. I know a lot of us wanna get away from the internet and we wanna leave our phones behind, but you have to also be safe. So you need to know where your last signal was, even if you don't have it where you're gonna camp. And also solar versus generator, we're not gonna get into that today. That's a whole debate. But at, with my brain in injury, I cannot do a generator. I have to be very, very, very careful who I even camp with if they have a generator. And I usually have to bow out. And that's why I do uh, deep remote boondocking. I have a generator in my truck camper, but I hardly ever use it, but it is a comfort knowing that I have it in case, you know, we've had cloudy days lately and it was, I didn't use it, but I had it just in case. Yeah, and uh, like Jana mentioned earlier, you need to know before you go, know the rules, regulations, laws, and guidelines. For example, I'm, I'm sure most of you know most of this, but we're gonna cover some details about time limit stays vary. When you get out on, uh, you're gonna do free campsites and boondocking, on public lands, it's usually 14 days within a 28 day period, but not always, you guys. That's right. If y'all have ever driven down south of Quartzsite and gone to Kofa, there's Kofa National uh, Refuge, Wildlife Re Refuge. Um, that is 14 days, but that's 14 days per year. You're only allowed to camp there 14 days per year. And by the way, if you haven't gone and seen Palm Canyon at Kofa, if you go to the base of the mountain, awesome. that's a nice, it's not an easy hiking trail, but it's moderate, but beautiful. And you can see palm trees in the desert. Oh yeah. Next. You're still up. <laughs> I'm on. Um, LTVA, there's also LTVAs in the area, long-term visitor area. That is not free. It comes with a fee, but that is a um, seven month stay up to, which is from September 15th to April 15th. And the LTVA is considered boondocking or um, a dispersed camping, even though it has a fee and they have shorter time periods, which if you're already here in the area, so you're probably already aware of that. Some public lands coast to coast are as little as three to five days. So you just need to know before you go. And I know if you're a newbie that this can seem confusing or even overwhelming at times, but I, I promise you, if I can figure this out and I can do it with my traumatic brain injury, I believe that you can too. I can't tell you enough how much I love boondocking and dispersed camping out in the wild. Um, all the things that we're gonna cover today Help, hopefully will help you be able to leave and do it on your own without having to be dependent, even though you can follow others if you want to. I retired early and this lifestyle saved my life too. <laughs> <laughs> she was, I was gonna die in that desk. So this, I, yeah. Jana was an IT director for a major city in Texas and she's like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about finding those uh, free, hopefully Nirvana campsites that we all want. First of all, you gotta get there. And so I wanna talk about route selection because I think it gets skipped over a lot. We start looking for just the campsite, but you're, you can narrow in on that just from the get go from looking at your route selection. 
Probably everybody or most of you are familiar with freecampsites.net, but what you may not know is that they have a great trip planner. You can plug in your final destination, and then from there, and it'll show you all of the free campsites along the way, or mostly free, and then you can narrow down how many miles per day you want to go based on how you're feeling or maybe your budget. Uh, it's not an iPhone app right now, but you can, even on your iPhone, save it as a URL on your screen. Just be aware that the freecampsites.net app has not been updated since 2015. The app has not been updated, but the, the data, the information, or the reviews are pretty current. Yeah, not all websites, but they keep it up. Yeah, but, but you need to check out, when you're looking at apps, be, you do want to probably look at when the, last, when the app itself was last updated, even though people continue to download reviews and, keep, and, and uh, crowdsource that. Another great overview for your route, of course, is Google Maps. We use it for directions and everything, but a nice feature when you're gonna go do boondocking and free campsites on the Google Maps is that you can get your final destination and pull out and do an overview, and then you can drag that line. And the reason that that's important is because when we show you the tips and tricks in a minute of finding that campsite, and you're drilling down, let's say that you've decided you're gonna break your uh, trip up into three states. Well, as you start using the, the tools that we're gonna show you in a minute, you may decide that you're not gonna go that particular route, you're gonna go over this way 90 miles or whatever. And you can use Google Maps then, and while you're making your plan, you can decide if you need to change it based on budget or if you need to add uh, more days to your ETA. Uh, Google Maps overview is excellent for that. A lot of apps take too long because they're bloated, and then you lose your route and everything. So I usually use Google Maps overview. So Google Maps and freecampsites.net is a great place to start. It's a great overview. But then after I look on Google or freecampsites.net, I always go to my paper maps. I love my paper maps. I'm old school, but I love my maps. And yeah, in this, in this is a benchmark. I know y'all probably can't see this, but no, you but can on see one that there's side, writing next yeah, to on the one map. side is the map and on the other side is, is a lot of small little words. And <laughs> That gives you information. There's, it shows you uh, wildlife refuge places. It also shows you national parks, hiking trails, RV parks, campgrounds. So a lot of information in some of the paper maps that you won't find on Google. Yeah, it take, it take, we have found it takes both. You, uh, by the end of our presentation, hopefully you can pick out what might work best for you. Another tip that I can offer is while I'm driving, I keep three apps open on my phone. I keep Google Maps open for directions and overview, but I also keep U.S. Public Lands open and Allstays Truck and Travel. We'll come back to discussing those more in a moment, but again, we're talking about our route selections at uh, this time. And uh, today we're going to close as quickly as we can. We're going to do a quick Q&A. The, all the links and the apps that we are covering today, we have on a handout for you. We should have plenty for everybody, of course, free of charge. And uh, so it, uh, you can come pick those up. They will be over here. And we'll stick around to continue to answer questions that don't get um, uh, addressed by Mike uh, so that we can give the stage to these guys. Oh, it's still me, sorry. <laughs> Before we get down uh, to the details on finding the exact sites, there's one more thing that I think is important that we cover. Because when I was a newbie out here, it, it, for me, it took a while to learn and it wasn't discussed enough up front. And that's about definitions. And you may think that that is silly and we won't get bogged down in it. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're gonna cover a, a few definitions right quickly. So when we were looking on the, the website, on. Uh, about the class and everything. We saw information about this class was gonna be, our presentation was gonna be about boondocking and 
and free finding free campsites and dispersed camping. And so there's a lot of different names. So we're gonna just share a little bit about the definition of these terms. Yeah, we'll go over them real quickly. Friends of mine and I made a, a video in 2021 about nomad terminology. And we're gonna talk about the free camping available in each of these categories. First of all, the ones that you're here for, boondocking and dispersed camping is usually on public lands. That includes BLM, Bureau of Land Management, which is managed by the Department of Interior. Of course, the National Forest Service, and that is managed by the Department of Agriculture. There's also for public lands, trust lands, national monument lands, national wildlife refuge, NRAs, national recreation areas, Bureau of Reclamation, and even more. That's, next, let's talk about dry docking. So dry docking is not boondocking or dispersed camping. It is more of areas that are being assigned. You might have a campsite that's assigned, might be in a state park, um, but they even have, most of the times they'll have improvements like picnic tables. Um, so some of the examples of that would be rest areas or hip camps, city and county parks, uh, Army of Corps, Corps of Engineers and others. Right, and uh, this last one is not camping, you guys. If you are guilty of this, please quit using it as camping. And that is urban docking, that is my term for it, and that includes parking lots, like truck stops, retail stores, casinos, etc. Always make sure that you are doing that legally and with permission. I uh, told you that I travel with Allstays uh, Truck and Travel open because you might be getting tired and not be able to make it to that destination or that you had wanted to. And Allstays Truck and Travel uh, will tell you where the next rest area is, the next truck stop casino. They tell you where the retail stores are uh, and even they will tell you, be sure you get permission. It is an iPhone app only, but again, for Android users, you can save the URL on your screen and access it that way and open up the map while you're driving. And the last one? I'm still on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we have uh, one that we thought was funny, but it is true. Sometimes you use a, a, what's called free mooch docking. And that, of course, is when you stay with family and friends, but we're not going to talk about that today. Uh, but we are going to cover finding the free camping in boondocking, dispersed camping, those, those are used interchangeably, dry docking, and urban camping. All of that is done on private lands, federal lands, state lands, county, and city. So you guys, free camping is not just limited to BLM or National Forest Service, which is what most of us start off knowing about. Uh, so that was selecting your route and overview of that. Now we're gonna talk about the specific tools to get you to the free campsite. First, we're gonna start with the non-digital tools. Going back to my paper maps. So I always start with the paper maps, start with the Rand McNally. Um, try to get your current, uh, the most current version that they have, um, so it's all updated. This is the one I bought for my coast to coast trip. And um, it has, it's a great overview basically, and then you can start getting more detailed as you go from there. Um, this is just New Mexico, and I also like to, after the fact or as I'm driving, I highlight where I've been, that way I can, you know, if I want to go back, I know how to get there and highlight the places that I stayed. Go this, back to this, yeah, this is a benchmark, and this is one book for the state of Arizona. So, if you visit a state and a lot of it, you may want to get that state. It's more detailed, it shows more um, BLM, it also shows. Uh, it's just more detailed information. As you saw, it gives you uh, state parks and stuff like that. And then you can even get even more localized. This is National Forest Maps. Um, I like to go to the forest and boondock. And uh, one of these is Lincoln National Forest, which I've gone to quite a bit. And I went there once with friends and wanted to go back and didn't know how to get there. So I stopped at the ranger station, bought this map, and it had all the road numbers, 
and actually all the forest roads were marked so I was able to go to my favorite place in New Mexico and spend the night there so you can even get localized maps. Yeah and the uh, MVU is a motorized vehicle use map and they used to have them at the kiosk in, in National Forest. They don't anymore. You pretty much have to go to the uh, forest ranger station and get them. They list, every, in that forest, they list every single forest service road and they show them down to details. For my brain injury, this map is too detailed. If we open this up, it would cover probably the front of the stage. Uh, Jana loves these detailed maps. This one is actually April 2021, but the other thing I found with the MVU maps is be careful what they give you because it's a government map, it's a paper map, and they're awfully, off, often very outdated, um, as, as you can imagine. So, but they are very, very useful. So that's the paper maps that I like to go and use. Um, after that, I go to Google. Everybody <laughs> goes to Google, Google's our friend. So just type in, if you go to Google, type in free camping and it's all gonna come up. You're gonna see all the little icons and everything. And it also shows you attractions around there. Um, of course you can use it for directions. And then another feature is if you um, look for the satellite view, click on that and you can start drilling down and actually see what kind of terrain is in that area so if you you know if it's a desert or if it's forest so you can you know google has a lot of information too yeah that satellite view if you get if you already know where you're going uh we're going to talk about getting down to this point but if you already know where you're going on that satellite view you can even sometimes see the exact uh, fire ring at the campsite where you're going to go and it'll tell you uh what kind of roads to expect whether or not your rig can make it over those roads uh so very very helpful uh, i told you that i travel with u.s public lands open the reason that i travel with that open is because if i'm traveling and all of a sudden i find myself in the middle of public lands because it tells you and it tells you who that public land is governed by um, I can I can kind of earmark that and go, oh, I'm coming back here and I've got my phone open so I can check signal at the same time. And uh, so I just love that. When you get to your free campsite, you're going to want to make sure that you're not in a checkerboard situation and uh, US Public Lands app can help with that. And by uh, checkerboard, I mean, if, uh, for example, you're on BLM, it can look BLM is tan, tan white, tan white, tan white, tan white. And that's because sometimes there are residence areas that have been grandfathered in and they're in the middle of public lands or it can be a lease maybe to um, oil and gas, for example. And so you went in on public lands and you, you know that you're on public lands, but you wanna make sure that you're not setting up camp on one of the white ones. And the same thing with National Forest Service. It'll be green, white, green, white, green, white. So US public lands is good for while you travel and when you get there, and it is by uh, two steps beyond, which is Chris and Cherie of Technomedia. They keep that they keep that app up to date. It's awesome. Still me. <laughs> okay. All right. So specific <laughs> sites. <laughs> so specific sites. Uh, again, uh, use the uh, uh, paper maps and get an overview. But let's talk now about getting down to that sweet spot by using apps. So. We open up our phone, we look at the app store, you type in free camping. I mean, thousands, hundreds of apps are gonna come up. You're just gonna have to pick some of, and see which one that you prefer to use, but we're gonna share some of the ones that we use. Um, it doesn't mean that there's better ones, not better ones out there, but um, this is just what we use. Uh, and, and tried and true over the years uh, that we've been out here. Um, this is um, a list of the apps, again, on, uh, on the handout that you're gonna get. So I mentioned um, that a lot of people use freecampsites.net and um, it, it, the core software itself has not been updated since 2015, but it is still a great app. When I go to narrow down on finding that sweet spot campsite, however, I usually switch over to more robust apps. Uh, for example, Campendium. It is uh, the last software update that they did was December of, of uh, that we just uh, left last month, 2022. 
And so I use more robust apps for consideration, especially if I want more information about the area, if I want to know more about uh, cell phone and internet coverage, and also to get uh, real-time data. Uh, and some apps can be, um, they work better, honestly, uh, on your laptop or on your uh, tablet than they do on your phone. You're just going to have to play around with them and discover what apps you like uh, that works best for you and which ones you like. The other thing we want you to know is that some campsites are listed on some apps, but not others. And so you usually want to open up several apps and play around with it when you start uh, listing some that you want to try out. The top three that we, we did not know this until we were preparing for this class, but we both use the top same top three apps and that's freecampsites.net, Campendium and The Dirt. So we wanted to ask how many of you use or have used freecampsites.net? Let us see. Me. <laughs> okay, quite a few. Same how many of you use Campendium? Hi, please, so we can see. Okay, that's about pretty even, I'm surprised. How many of you use The Dirt? Okay, less. That, that's about what we expected. Thank you, guys. So we're not going to go into details on these apps. They're um, pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you open freecampsites.net, which one is one of the popular ones, um, it's going to ask you the location. You put in the location, and all these little icons are going to pop up. Basically, what you want to know is the green ones are free and the red ones are a fee. Oh, yeah. So, um, but you can, there's a legend, so you can look. Yeah. And also on the apps, keep in mind that you are looking at crowdsourced reviews for the most part, and they may or may not be verified. And closures. It's the it's, uh, reason I say you have a backup for your backup is because closures aren't always listed on these apps. They may be, maybe somebody just went through there and they just posted, I was there three weeks ago and it was closed. Well, how do you know it didn't open up last week? Okay, and, and it depends on maybe why it was closed. So closures, there I have not found an app yet that is going to be uh, a majority of the time correct about closures. That's why you've got to have more than one game plan going on when you go to find a place. Yeah, like Deborah said, just because it was open when you camped there before doesn't mean it's going to be open the next time you go. So have a backup plan. Um, for example, I was going to take Deborah as in our New Mexico trip. I was going to take her to my favorite forest road number five. And <laughs> we drove through there or drove by there and I was, we had walkie talkies. I said, look, it's closed. It was padlocked. <laughs> Called closed and locked. So um, we're suspecting because of the forest fires this summer in New Mexico. But yep, it was closed. Yeah, and, and I, 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 this isn't in my notes, but I just want to tell you that usually uh, on an annual basis, about 40% of the places I used to uh, camp are closed. Next, the next year, they might be open back up again. But about 40, I'm running into that about 40% of the time. So even though you may be familiar with a place that you used to camp at and it was glorious and it was free, you still need to do your research and have a backup for your backup before you get there. And um, let's see, I don't, I got lost. Oh, I think you're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my turn. Oh. Um. I don't, I rarely hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as you know, there's tons of apps out there and, uh, we're just going to go over two of our favorites that is not free campsites because that's kind of in the consensus that we all use those. But over the years, um, we've found a couple of favorites that we're going to share with you. And also, um, on the handout, I know I keep referencing it, but I, I, I forgot to tell you all something. It'll say whether or not it's iPhone specific or uh, Android specific. We put very few on here that are uh, uh, carrier specific like that. Uh, most of them are for both, and uh, oh, go ahead. I well, you know, I don't have phone, my phone, but I have an Android, and she has an iPhone, so we're in constant. And we're, we're constantly phone. battling it out. <laughs> we can agree that we both have one favorite app, 
McDonald's. McDonald's. And I know that doesn't have anything to do with boondocking, but you yes, guys, when you're, when you're traveling, you're going to be shocked at how much, if you use your food apps, you can get free food I'm and frugal. discounts. Exactly. Yeah, and she's frugal RV gal for a reason. Yep. So when we are traveling and you get up early to go find that boondocking site, we often will just get hurry up and get in our rigs, get going, run through McDonald's and, and uh, get free food and go to our free boondocking site. Doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, if you get the app, just a side note, if you get the app, look for Friday, free Friday French fries. That's or Friday it. free French fries. That's it. So. All right, so for a recap, use your maps and apps to find your route that you want to do so that you can start drilling down to your free camping sites. Right quickly, we are going to share uh, one inch off of the list that we thought you might not be as familiar with, and, and they also are ones that we love. So I... Uh, use an app called State Lines. Um, as I told you, I traveled eight new states that coast to coast trip. So it's good to know about the laws and rules and regulations of each state that you travel in. If you want to spend the night in a rest stop, it's good to know if, if they allow that or not. So the app is called State Lines. There's all different information about that state in that app. Um, they do have a tab called RVing, and so it gives you a lot of information about RVing in that state. And one example is uh, the re uh, rest areas um, that I mentioned. So rest area overnight rules. For example, Arizona, it shows that it's permitted. If you go to the Washington state, it will say a maximum of eight hours. Yeah. We did spend the night in a Washington rest area and there was parking slots for one hour, there was parking slots for four hours, and there was parking slots for eight hours. Yeah. So just be aware of uh, the laws in the state. Other examples that I found interesting is, of course, speed limits. Um, electric bike laws, we yeah, had the presentation that. about electric bikes. Do you need to wear a helmet when you're riding your electric bike? You can find it there. Mo motorcycle laws, um, even grocery sacks, how much they cost <laughs> if you go to that state, yeah. Um, also leash laws, um, Arizona, it has a leash law, Idaho doesn't. So it's good to know and lots of information on this app. And just because a state may have a particular law, keep in mind that federal laws trump state laws all the time, 100% of the time. So if you are camping on public lands and it happens to be federal public lands, it doesn't matter what the state laws are. Federal law always mandates a leash law. So just know that if the rangers come up and your dog is running loose, I, I won't go there anymore because I have been guilty and I'm trying not to be anymore. Uh, mine that I wanted to share with you is called What Three Words. And that particular app, that's all one word for the app. It's available on Android and iPhone. What Three Words. I believe it is going to change our future. I am, I am blown away by this app. And um, it takes every three meters and gives you unique words. And I'm going to tell you about some apps that are using it behind the scene because they are getting partners and developers like crazy. It was originally done so that musicians could find their gigs and not be late and uh, because they might not know where they're going all the time and everything. And I think the guy that developed this app had no idea what he had stumbled into. It is phenomenal. So if you're camped with somebody and they are more than three meters away from you, it gives each rig its own unique identification. For example, if some of you are all camped together in a group right now, maybe at the spot or somewhere else, and you have an emergency, with what three words it will identify for the emergency 911 dispatch what rig they are going to. It is, it is mind blowing. And even if, um, so there is a lot of 911 dispatch that are uh, developing software and are currently using it. And I don't remember the name of the software. I didn't write it down. 
but I think it is it will possibly even replace GPS trackers. It certainly can now. You have the ability to turn on tracking in that app and um, you can give somebody, your friends and family when you land, you can give them your three words. And even if they don't have the app, you can open it up if, because you do if you if you choose to download this app. You open it up and you can get your map coordinates through Google Maps or uh, Apple Maps, whatever you use, and give them the coordinates that way. It is much better than a pin, which might give an area, but it's not going to give your exact rig location. So I think this is, is um, changing everything and you can save those three words and name them what you want to. Um, much like a Google pin, I guess. You can rename that, uh, but this is just much more specific. I looked at the app today and uh, there are people that are using it. Uh, Avenza Maps, I don't know if y'all are uh, familiar with Avenza Maps, but that is a great hike and uh, trail map and uh, the National Forest Service uses a Venza map. So that means that the National Forest Service is now using what three words. And then when I went to the app, uh, to the Avenza Maps app, people were talking about, oh my God, I can't believe this app. I got down to within 10 feet of, my, of where I wanted to go. Well, they don't realize it's because a developer has created software that where Avenza Maps can talk to what three words. And also um, things like um, OnStar and some of the uh, vehicle maps are starting to use what three apps and again it's blind to you but you can have that right now on your phone because you came here to hear our presentation <laughs> download it in <laughs> download it is all right so that leads us to safety tools for boondocking we're going to have to hurry through this but your best safety tool is your gut instinct you guys have heard that over and over and over if you don't feel safe turn the key and move on down the road and we're going to cover some things that we think if you don't have on hand it can affect where you are where you decide to camp especially if you are doing boondocking and doing free campsites and if you're traveling solo um, because if you are going to camp way out and you don't have some of these things, you may want to pull back and get closer to the road. If you don't have a lot of these things, you're going to want to stay close to the road. And so we think it could affect where you go. GPS satellite trackers or what three words have something like that for communications. Make sure that your electronics are charged completely before you head out because you never know when you're going to get cloudy days and, and need to have those charged up. Also make sure that your gasoline tank is full before you go on the hunt for that sweet spot. Uh, make sure you have an air pump for your tires and a good spare tire. Other items to consider would be a saw, a hatchet, a shovel, a toe strap. I've used both of those in conjunction to pull out a class C and a class A out of the desert. It wasn't me. No, yet. <laughs> But um, <laughs> true story, <laughs> true story. But um, also another one that I've used several a handful of times, probably ten times, is a battery uh, oh, jumper oh, right yeah. here. There you go. So small, this small, and this will get you out of a situation if you get a dead battery. You're by yourself and you're boondocking out in the middle of nowhere. You have no cell service, and your battery dies. You can jump off your battery with this, and I've used it, like I said, hundreds of, well, not hundreds, okay, 10 times <laughs> for me and friends. So. True. And so some safety apps that you need to be aware of is uh, for fire, weather, and emergency alerts. Uh, we, again, we listed, listed them on, on, yeah, on the handout. This summer, uh, we were camped with a couple of friends, and we had had a scare. And so we, uh, from fire, and so we had downloaded these apps. And uh, I'm really glad we did because we got notified that a fire was coming in. Uh, we started looking and sure enough, it breached the mountain and came after us. We were flying, we, we broke camp. We were flying down the mountain. Uh, the, the two were in front, I was third, Jana was behind me. And all I could do was watch in my mirrors as she's behind me and the fire is right on her ass. We were flying. Yeah. And so, uh, you not know, a place you want to be. Yeah. So, but, but we, I don't think we would have had time to break camp and get out of there like we did if we had not already downloaded those safety apps. So I'm, I'm not saying that lightly. Um, right One of them I just want to mention um, is the 5 0. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now, what is it? But I just thought of this. 
Five O Radio. Yeah. That is scanner, police scanner, fire scanner, and um, sheriff. And I was listening to that on my cell phone and relaying to Deborah because they were closing roads right and left. And so yeah. we had to, I mean, we really yeah. had to It scurry. even affected our route getting up and we couldn't get into town. We had to go completely around the mountain. We couldn't get, we couldn't get to Flagstaff. We had to route and go up, way out to the desert. But we knew that because she had that Radio 5 Data show on. Um, so it is it is important uh, wrapping things up quickly some additional things that we want you to know I can't stress again and this is the last time I say it I promise but have a backup plan for your backup plan and um, I you know sometimes um, Jenna has shared with me that sometimes it's taken you a few hours to, to drive around and, and, and find a, a free campsite I will tell you that for me, a uh, couple of times, it has taken me two days. Um, I went out one time and uh, the, the places that I uh, uh, was gonna go to, they were either taken or closed. And so I went to my backup plan and I went down this road and I, I traveled it for a couple of hours hunting and trying different spur roads and everything off of it. And I don't know uh, what somebody had been smoking when they left that review and said there was camping down off that road, but there was not and had not been. I did update that review. Uh, and then my third place that I tried that day, uh, when I got there, it was just too sketchy. I didn't feel safe. And so I turned around and I went back to town and I did some urban docking for one night, got some rest and went back out the next day. And I found a wonderful spot uh, in just a couple of hours. And the other place that that happened to me was in Wyoming. And both those times I was solo docking. So you, you need to be prepared that you might not find it right away. And that's why we're sharing some of these things with you today, but, but it can take several hours. Also, if you close an app or a map while you're driving, and then you run into an area where you don't have signal, you're not going to get it back. Um, I am quick to close apps, and so I've got I've broken that habit because I've done that to myself too many times, and then I get out in the middle of nowhere looking for that campsite, and dang it, I, I just lost all my information, and I end up having to go back to town to open it back up. So start your search early in the day, as early as possible, and most of all, you guys have fun. Part of finding these free campsites is going out and, um, and looking for, uh, enjoying the new places that you get to see and the beauty of, of this land. It's just unbelievable to me. And be prepared to back all the way out. Ask me how I know. Yeah, I've, had, <laughs> I've had to do that um, probably one time a mile and a half, uh, but at least half a dozen times in my eight years out here, I've had to back all the way out a road and I, I'm turning around a million K turns uh, probably, uh, I don't, countless times. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. I just want to mention one other thing. Um, Sometimes your directions, Google will lead, lead you astray, but sometimes they'll lead you right to a gate and the gate's closed. Um, if the gate's closed and it's not locked, that is a public road. You can travel that public road. It might be ranch land on either side, but that road is public. Open the gate, drive on through, close the gate. Just close the gate because you're trying to keep cows in. <laughs> and you're gonna be camping with cows, so. Yeah. Watch where you step. Of course, yeah. road number five is where. And, <laughs> and just be sure that you verify that it is public lands. And then also I have been asked every time that I do a video and I post that where I'm camped and I'm camped out in the wilderness by myself, inevitably at least one, two or three people will say, well, aren't there wild animals out there? Do you have to be aware of wild animals? What kind of wild animals are out there? The answer to the question of if, if there are animals you need to be aware of, it is yes. yes. There will be wild animals. It doesn't matter whether it's rattlesnakes, coyotes, bears, ask Jenna how she knows about that. Um, so yes, there are wild animals. Walk it before you park it. If you're gonna pull off the road and go into a camping area and you can't see around that curve or you can't see around the trees, get out and walk it before you park it because while the road may look steady, you get out there and you'll sink to your ankles and imagine how your heavy rig is gonna do. Watch the weather because as you know, it can change on a dime. And if you want to keep your sight, not a lot of people care about that. They pack up and they go to town to run their errands. And if they come back and their sight is gone, they're happy to go to someplace else. But if it is busy season 
and you have worked really hard to get that campsite, I put down a tarp and a little kitty tent that um, allows me to uh, hopefully keep my site. And I have checked with multiple rangers in, in multiple districts, in multiple states. That is not the same as reserving a site, which you cannot do on public lands. I have been told time and time again that to put, leave your stuff out while you go to town is perfectly fine. Just know whatever you leave out, there is no guarantee and it may be gone when you come back. And the people that are camping there could say there was nothing here when I got here. And you just turn your key and move on down the road. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I got one word for you. I got Let one it go. word for you. Let it go. So know before you go the rules, laws, regulations, and guidelines. What else? Okay. We are going to open it up for some questions and answers uh, so that this band can start playing for you guys. And I'm going to sing. <laughs> She's going to sing. And after that is Nomad Land. Look at that screen they're gonna show Nomadland on tonight. That's a big. <laughs> <laughs> 